Hello, welcome to another video. We want to know when this curve is concave up. That is, it's like an open ball facing up. And remember from your calculus one, whenever you try to test the concavity of a curve, you have to find d2y dx squared, the second derivative of the curve. Now, but this curve is not in the rectangular form. This is a parametric uh, curve, so you have two portions. X depends on T, Y depends on T. It means whatever we do will have to be in terms of T, even though we still need to find the second derivative, d2y dx squared. Now, there's a, there's a lot um, in this case, and we're going to take it one after the other. The first thing is we find the first derivative, then we find the second derivative, and then we have to decide when it is concave up or concave down, where the problem usually is, is in finding the second derivative because there's a slight twist. Let's get into the video. So the first thing we're gonna do is find the first derivative of this curve which is gonna be our dy dx. So we know that dy dx is the same thing as dy dt divided by dx dt. As you can see, the dt's can cancel out and then you get your dy dx. So um, let's see that. That's gonna be equal to what's dy dt here? If we differentiate this with respect to t, so this is the interval over which we're doing an investigation of concavity, so it's not forever. But what is dy dt? We know that dy dt is the derivative of this, which is gonna be two cosine two t. That's dy dt. Divided by dy dt, I mean dx dt, dx dt is the derivative of this, which is negative sine t. So is there any simplification we can do here? Let's just leave it. Let's find the second derivative. And that's where the little twist comes in. Because remember that in computing dy dx, we found dy dt and dx dt and divided them and got this. If you want to take the second derivative, what should you do? Look, we know, now I'm going to do some, um, some manipulation. We know that dy dx, so the second derivative is d2y dx squared. And d2y dx squared is the same thing as d dx of dy dx. This is the meaning, okay? We're gonna take it as if it's a multiplication. You're taking the derivative with respect to x of the first derivative, okay? But there is no x. <laughs> All we've got are t's. Okay, there's a t here, there's a t here. So we have to do this in terms of t. So look at how we're going to manipulate this. So that you don't just memorize the formula for the second derivative, you know how it is established. So we're trying to find this, but we have written it this way. But I need to take my derivative with respect to t. So see what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave this guy alone. Watch this. I'm going to leave this dy dx alone. Let's write it here. dy dx. But you see this d dx? I'm going to write it this way. I'm going to write d dt instead of d dx. Now, the only way to restore this is to multiply this by dt dx. Mm. You see that? What I've just done, because I can cancel out this dt, so it's still d dx dy dx. But what I really want is d dt. I don't want this dt dx here. So what I'm going to do is push this dt dx down here so that this is still the same thing. Watch this. It's going to be d dt. I'm going to bring this back. dy dx. But this ddt, I'm going to push it down. When you push down a fraction under the line, 
it gets flipped. It becomes dx dt. Now this is the formula for the second derivative. So d2y dx squared is actually d dt of dy dx divided by dx dt. This you have to know. This is the only way to take the derivative of a parametric equation. We already know what dx dt is. It's this guy. But we need to take the derivative of dy dx with respect to t one more time. And what is our dy dx? Well, it's this guy. So we have to take the derivative of this. So we can clearly say that d2y, d2y dx squared will be equal to d dt of dy dx, which is 2t, 2 cosine 2t divided by negative sine t divided by what is dx dt? Oh, it's negative sine t. Look, it's negative sine t. Nice. So we're going to take the derivative of this using the quotient rule and then we're going to divide it by negative sine t. This negative I can pull it out here and this negative I can pull out. So um, this is the same thing as just saying d dt of I can pull out this 2 also. So I can just have 2 here. So it's 2 times d dt of cosine 2t over sine t divided by this negative cancels this negative. So I just have sine t. And that's it. So now let's take this derivative. What's the derivative of cosine 2t sine t applying the quotient rule? We're going to have this to be equal to 2 times, let's put a giant brace here. If we apply the quotient rule, don't forget, this will be divided by sine t. Okay, the quotient rule says you take the denominator, sine t, multiplied by the derivative of the top. If you differentiate the top, you're going to get negative 2 sine 2t minus, oh, it's going to be a long one. Okay, minus, I may have to move this. And then we're going to take the derivative, we're going to have sine t. So we take the derivative of the bottom and then we have cosine 2t times the derivative of the bottom, which is cosine t, all divided by the square of the denominator, sine squared t. Okay, then all divided by sine t, the sine t here. So we know that if we simplify what we have on top, this comes down here, so we have sine cubed t. Now what happens here? We need to find our critical numbers because we found the derivative. There's nothing, there's nothing weird here. Um, that's all we've got to do, right? But how can we solve this equation? We need to solve this. But I'm looking at something very, very, very juicy here. You notice that sine 2t is the same thing as sine t, 2 sine t, cosine t, the double angle formula for sine. And I know that cosine, so it means I'm going to have sine t, sine t, 2 sine t, cosine t. I'm going to have that here. Here, I'm going to have cosine 2t can be written as 1 minus sine squared t. So you're beginning to see where things are going. Okay, some trig identity. Okay, let's do that. You know what? I'm going to have to clean this because I don't have enough space. So let me just show you the work here. You see negative 4 sine t, sine 2t can be written as, I'm going to erase this after, after a, a while, is the same thing as negative 4 sine t multiplied by sine 2t is the same thing as 2 sine t cosine t. If we distribute this, we're going to end up with 
negative 8 sine squared t cosine t. Now let's repeat the same thing here. We know that negative 4, watch, sorry, we know that 2 cosine t cosine 2t can be written as 2 cosine t times, you see this cosine 2t can be written as 1 minus 2 sine squared t. This is the double angle formula for cosine. Remember there are three versions of it, but you just pick the one that's more relevant to what's going on. Because now I'm going to have two of these cosines, this um, sine squared together. So this is the same thing as equal to 2 cosine t minus 4 sine squared t cosine t. So at this point, if we do this, negative this, minus this, so it's going to be this, minus this. If I put the minus, it changes this, but let's just subtract this from this, just the way it is on top here. If we subtract this from this, it's going to be this minus this, and you notice that our next line is going to be equal to, mm, let me see, this minus this is going to be this, subtract this, you're going to add this, so you're going to be left with negative 2 cosine t, minus, in fact, this is what will be left. If you subtract this from this, this is what is left with this having a leading negative sign. So what we have will be, I'm going to erase this, so it's going to be, let me write it first, negative 2 cosine t minus 4 sine squared t cosine t. Okay, let's get rid of this this divided by sine t cubed. So we have simplified the top. This is going to be over sine t cubed. Oh, sine cubed t rather, sine cubed t, like this. So we need to find the critical numbers, but we're almost there. How do we find the critical numbers? Well, we want to find the values of t for which the top is equal to zero and the bottom equals zero. Those are the critical numbers Let's simplify one more time. What can I factor out? What's common? I have 2 and I have cosine t. I'll take this negative sign along. So what I have is negative 2 cosine t multiplied by what's going to be left here is 1. Because I've taken the minus sign out, I'm going to have 2. That will be plus 2 sine squared t. Okay. And the bottom is still sine cubed t. So what are the critical numbers? Watch this. Under what condition will sine cubed t be equal to zero? Let's quickly do that. We're still going to erase it. I don't have a lot of time, or a lot of space. So I have sine cubed t will be equal to zero only when sine t equals zero. <coughs> When is sine t equal to zero? Well, within this interval, it's at zero and at pi. So critical numbers will be t equals zero or t equals pi, because those two values will give us sine t equals zero. So we're done with the first part. Now let's go to the top. When will this top ever be equal to zero? Clearly, this can never be zero. Look. 1 plus 2 sine squared t can never be 0 because the worst they could, this could be is 0. Then if you add 1 to it, then it's no longer 0. This cannot be negative because sine squared t will always be positive. And then you multiply it by 2, then add 1. So it can never be 0. So the only portion of this that can be 0 is this, negative 2 cosine t. So we can also say negative 2 cosine t equals 0 would mean that cosine t will be equal to zero. When is cosine t equal to zero within this interval? Is it right in the middle when you have pi over two? So the critical number we get here is pi over two. So those are the critical numbers, t equals zero, pi 
or pi over 2. And these are the three uh, numbers we're going to test out and see what happens. However, 0 is the beginning and pi is the ending. So it looks like the center is just pi over 2. We just want to test which part concaves up and which part concaves down within this interval. Let's get rid of this and do our sign chart and we'll be done. This is our sign chart. We want to test which of these regions will be positive or negative if we test based on this derivative. So you need to write the three components that you've written as a product on the side. So the first one is negative 2 cosine t. The second one is 1 plus 2 sine squared t. 1 plus 2 sine squared t. And the third one is sine cubed of t. So what you take, say is, if I pick any value of t between 0 and pi over 2, what will this be? Well, we know that sine and cosine are both positive in the first quadrant. So this is the first quadrant. So it means this is positive times negative. This is going to be negative. We already said that this will always be positive. So whatever happens, you get this to be positive. In the first quadrant, also sine is always positive. So this is a negative, positive, positive. This is a negative, which means this concaves down like this because we get a negative overall effect. Negative times positive times positive is negative. Now when we go here, um, what's going to happen here? Let's push this down a bit. Now if you pick any value of cosine from pi over 2 to pi, in the second quadrant cosine is negative. So it's going to be negative times negative, which is going to be positive. And this is sine in the second quadrant. Sine is always positive. So the cube of a positive number is still positive. So this is where it concaves up. So the region from pi over 2 to pi in this interval is where it concaves up. And that's the answer to this question. I've been able to show you. So what do we say? We say the curve is concave up. I'm going to write it this way on the interval pi over 2 to pi. That's it. Don't forget this and never stop learning because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.